so you guys obviously enjoy when I do these redesigned posters, this breakdown series. So let's go ahead and do two more right now. And just let's just let's have some fun. Do not forget to check out the everything pack. If you guys do not know what it is, all 28 of my custom made products that you get on that one purchase, plus all future products free. OK, so the first poster we have is by Viv Sync and it has an Arsenal's Martinelli, Martinelli Gabrielle. I know soccer, football. Oh, sh okay, sorry. Honestly, when I first saw this design, I, had, I honestly just felt like I had a really cool approach, like the background, the intensity, the vibe of it all felt really good, but I do think the like the stacking of the photos wasn't my favorite. I feel like the hierarchy, although it could be, it's not that it's wrong. I don't know if it's exaggerated enough for like the attitude. I thought the actual typography can use a little bit of help and then maybe just a little bit less lighting effects to possibly bring some more contrast into the idea. So hopefully that's what I'll be tackling. I also see like we have like in the far, far, far background to get some little like ideas or like, how do you say, uh, texture in the actual uh composition if i bring this all the way up you'll see that we have this really cool stadium as well i'm guessing this is like the arsenal stadium or something like that but like you know it's a terrible it's a terrible photo but i think the idea of the stadium could also be introduced to the actual foreground as well maybe help separate the photos things like that let's go ahead and redesign this just let's just let's just see what happens realistically okay so first things first i think i'm just going to move over all of this texture and pretty much everything over to another document so I can just kind of get going the same exact way he did probably. So basically all of this stuff, I'm gonna drag in again. Okay, so we're left with this really cool background. I also kind of see this, what is, I see a V, uh, oh, this is your, your, okay. I have a weird take on this, but I wanna quickly say it. This is, I guess, his, of course his name for like watermarking, right? I'll always say, your watermark is actually design style no matter what you do in this world someone's gonna take your work and it doesn't matter if they have your name on it this might be a hot take don't like do something crazy with your design or add like this very big watermark or a whole bunch of lines to your design because then it you're just ruining the design for the sake of that one person who's gonna get a few likes on a possible copy or a possible post of your thing not worth it trust me literally not worth it so the photos themselves they're not that bad, but unfortunately, homie used the eraser tool and erased the layer, so I can't even go back, which is a little sad. The the one thing I wanna say, if you're a new designer, please do not use the eraser tool to erase your stuff. You can use the eraser tool if you use a layer mask, please, okay? This right here, this down here, right? This little layer mask, you click on this, and this little layer mask, you click on it, you see your uh, numbers, or excuse me, your colors will turn into white and black, and you'll see right here, white will erase, Black will fill in do it that way because if you make a mistake, you want to fix things, tweak things, you'll never have the assets. And I got to go find it. And I will say trying to find photos like this, there's a photo that this alignment or like this kind of like flow line, right? You kind of see it's very straight. That's what kind of makes it a little bit too flat in my opinion. So I'm thinking if we found this exact photo, which we did, sure. But what if we found another photo that is the same exact reaction, but is at least looking this way. That way, when this one's looking this way, we have like this line following this way as other lines following this way. And we have this one kind of just like sitting as like this really fun photo. So I'm thinking the flow line could be maybe explored just a tiny bit. So there is like something like this, which works pretty well in my opinion. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to quickly get rid of this one and get rid of this one and reset this up. This is like this this is over here this is behind it of course but this one is going to be super super big big enough for sure to kind of cover some canvas cover some space that like the arms being flailed is nice to kind of fill some space as well we'll kind of keep this one like mid-size so whatever his face is here which i think is around here we're gonna make it a little bit shorter that way it makes a little bit more sense for the hierarchy so here's my other idea the stadium's like over here right right here it's like very very crappy quality it just uses texture and honestly if i took it away it doesn't really even add much more texture but what if the idea of the stadium can I can bring to the foreground, okay? So I'm not adding assets. I'm just bringing things to the foreground. So what if, okay, what if I took this image and I cut this out? Oh, God. Oh, how am I going to cut this out? Okay, let me show you something. Let me show you a really quick tip on how I would cut out stuff like this that has a lot of sky imagery in it, which is like a little bit easier to cut out. I'm going to make a duplicate of this, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and just do go to my channels. I'm going to go to blue. I'm going to make a duplicate of the blue channel. Press OK, get rid of the blue channel, turn on the duplicate, right? So I only have one of the blue duplicates. I'll go to image adjustments curves. We're going to bring the white up and the black down. And I'm going to lower the white again just enough so I can get enough. How do you say like contrast difference between the actual uh, pillars here and then, and then the sky, right? Now, once I kind of find it, which I think is OK here, I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to go over here to where it says select color range and then just pray. OK, this is where you pray. Uh, localized colors, clusters, we'll throw that on. A little bit of fuzziness, 23. We'll go over here, click back on RGB, go back to layers. Then we're just gonna 
press this and then control I. So if I put a color behind here for a second, orange, let's for say, oh, it's not great. I mean, from here though, it's a pretty easy cut, right? I can go back into the layer mask, go into this nice big like uh, pillar here and fill this pillar back in. And then from these edges being cleaned up, I'm gonna do one more pass on color range on just the blue though. Then once I'm good with that, I'm gonna do one more color pass on the color range blue here, press okay. And then just try to get real close into here. I'm gonna take my eraser and erase it. Of course, the layer mask though. And then from here, I got this and then I'll double click back on here. And then I'll just make sure I press decontaminate colors just in case any colors just don't really work out in my favor. Press okay. Go back into layer mask. Just make sure all this stuff is filled in because it really doesn't matter too much for this case. But just like that, in about like 10 seconds for you guys or five minutes for me, I got a photo cut out. So we're gonna put this above even the players too. So something more like this, that way you have the kind of players Hiding behind it looks a little bit better in my opinion, something like this. Now I also have homie sliding on visible grass, which works for us, right? This is okay here. I might just kind of color match the actual skin tones now. So I'll go back into camera raw filter. All right, so I'm gonna go over here, use a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity, just a tiny bit. We're gonna bring the shadows up a tiny bit as well. Blacks down, just so everything looks pretty consistent. We're gonna even put the sharpening up on the details. And then I'll go to where it says color mixer, take my saturation on oranges, throw it up for the skin tone, throw it down a little bit for more like grungy feeling, which is not exactly what I want. So I'm gonna throw it up actually for luminance, a little more saturation on the skin. Let's come out of it really quick. Right, that looks good there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Let me throw in some of this texture and text because I also love type texture. So right now he has his left justified and since technically like the 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 point line is like, like his visual line, his eyes are kind of flowing this way. I might actually right justify it and it might feel a little bit better. So I'm gonna take all this stuff, throw it over here as well. I'm gonna make it a lot smaller though. Type texture should really feel like texture and like typography that's just seen if it's seen, right? I don't hate the fact that you use Dharma as like a, a font in general, but I don't know if Dharma is good for like a body type font. I think it's more of a heading font, so that's why it looks a little bit too hard to read. So I'm gonna take this, I'm actually gonna use Stratos, and I think I'm gonna probably make this so that it's like full uppercase, make it even smaller. Maybe I'll do like a stack, cause I don't know, the long lines and long like amount of text is a little odd for me, so I might do something like this. I mean, I also still don't like the type text how it is right here, I'm not gonna lie. So I might choose to say like his main title let's say this is like best newcomer okay so that's like the point of this tweet maybe or this post right and then this extra supporting information kind of sit right here that feels a little bit better not my favorite but just a little better so now from here i'm probably going to take this i'm going to make a new layer above all the player photos but under of course the stadium to add some like again like that cool light you kind of have in the background here is really nice i'm going to take that same orangey tone make it a little bit darker press ok nice little brush click a few times like so Linear dodge add, then we'll click one more time. A little bit of a darker hue, a little bit more saturation. Click a few times. The bottom layer, I'll control U on this layer. This will change, uh, bring up the hue and saturation table. I'm gonna take the hue and move this around just until I find one that really brings out some like vibrancy or like glows, right? Cause that top one is acting as our activator. The bottom one now is gonna be our color scheme, our color tone, right? Something like this looks pretty okay. It's a little like just high density. Like uh, it feels like it's like super expensive the light, so I'm gonna take the lightness in the top, bring it down maybe. Now, if I even add a third one, I'm, I'm also just kind of feeling the light itself. If I take it off for a second, it's actually taken away a little too much. So I don't know if it's like the first light I added is too muddy. I might have to like up the saturation, lower this down a little bit and kind of flirt with this a little bit more. So I'm like this for the top one, right? You kind of see it's like very, very subtle light. And the one behind here, or it'd actually be in between. So in front of this one, but behind this one, right? So that layer in between, same exact thing, I'll, I'll click a few times like so. We'll linear dodge add it, right? Then control U to mess with the lightness. I'm also realizing now this text definitely needs to be left justified, okay? For sure. I also feel like this image here has like a little too much green in it. I don't, I don't think, we don't even have green inside. It's just a little too green for me. So I'm gonna go into the lightness and just kind of hope that I can play with the, the luminance, excuse me a little bit more to kind of get rid of some of this green somehow. There we go. That feels a little bit better, right? Like the colored skin tone? Yeah. Oh, much better. Oh my God, that was awful. Let's do the same over here. So now what I end up doing is just adding a very, very simple rim light and just halo light, just because we add a little bit of light here. Although we don't intensify in the background, I do think adding maybe on the player itself might just make it look a little bit less subtle, but more like a complete picture. So we'll see. I could be completely wrong, but we'll see. We'll sort of start off with that nice thin light right here. Then we'll add a nice little second layer here, a couple masses as well. This one's gonna be a little bit bigger of a brush. And then we'll add one more, just like so. This is gonna be a lot darker as well, and then a little bit darker of a hue same opacity or blending mode excuse me linear dodge add 
and then we'll go in with a brush it's like 10 percent or like 30 percent uh, opacity and take it and just go in a few times and be nice and generous and we're gonna do the same thing with this photo back here the same exact technique maybe i'll take this like layer that's behind here that's kind of making everything dark use a layer mask to erase right take this and maybe just in certain areas right in the middle center portion we make sure that feels like the light is actually really out there and then for this guy right here we're going to take this make sure we center it use a little bit of a uh, sesso shadow brushes here i'm going to do a little bit of shadow work probably something like that a little lower the opacity right boom zoom this out for a second that feels good i might erase it just a tiny bit let's try color balance on the actual stadium Clip mask it to it and then just color balancing this a little bit more towards the red, right? Maybe taking the magentas a little bit in there as well. And then a tiny bit on the yellow, right? So like before, after, kind of kind of feels like it settles it in a little bit. And then speaking of settling in, ooh, I feel like what we may need to do here is add like a little bit of atmosphere, but how so? I got something like this this time. So it's like a more of like a fog kind of feeling. It has a lot more density, I feel like, and a lot more like, you know, volume. So maybe if I take this one instead, maybe not so much in the middle, right? Kind of like leaking on the right and left hand side. Then now if I throw this curve on, can I try to possibly get some more volume now? That feels good. Okay, should I make it a little bigger though to reach more of like the top? Make it a tiny bit more red, right? I feel like that did something. And then honestly from here, I think the only thing I don't really like too much going on here is this background has a bunch of different noise textures. I think one or two is good. We got like 20. You know what? I think from here, it, we can obviously tweak from here, but I think, I think it looks good. Okay, so if we're gonna pop up with the before and after, I think, like I said before, this concert just kind of lacked a little bit of hierarchy for me. And also, the players felt like they came from very much so different days, different photos, although whatever it could have been. I think the color correction need was definitely necessary. And you can see on my side, I really focused on making sure the players felt like we went from like small to medium to largest, where we're not seeing too much of like the same exact size. I think the players from like the middle and then the bottom needed some kind of separation. So that little stage that we just used that he had an asset in the background, Brought to the foreground, a way better quality one, obviously, but use that and the grass kind of felt like we made a real, real like solid platform for the actual poster. And then overall, the same things are pretty much around. We did very small tweaks in color in the background. And uh, yeah, I mean, just add a little atmospheric smoke and we're looking good. So let's call this one done. You guys have now learned and let's go to the last one. All right, so the next poster we have is a Roy Hibbert poster. Is that how you use Roy Hibbert? Yup, Roy Hibbert poster designed by Dizich. And honestly, I thought it was a pretty good poster. I, I honestly just wanted to try like the bluish black and white, see if I can make it a little bit more just kind of readable for the Roy Hibbert. So it's not like super, like, I, I don't know what it says at all. So like, and it, it, you know, if, if it wasn't the, the point, sure. But I think it's a, a cool way to probably approach this and try it again. So I'm gonna give it a shot myself and I'll just see if I can spice it up a little bit. There's a lot of contrast happening for the background, but then not a lot happening for the rest of the composition. So that's my play. Let's just, first things first, I'm gonna personally say to myself that I'm gonna bring in another square. Okay, now in this square, I'm gonna make this a little bigger, maybe a little further down so we just have their heads peeking or something. And then this, we're gonna make a little bit further down as well and just give it a little bigger of a space to work with. Then I'll just take our texture here and clip mask it. And that way we can just take it, make it bigger and then kind of sit it like so. Now. I'm not a fan of this texture back here. I'm actually curious if this texture might be better. Like if I got rid of this texture, drag this one over, made it bigger and just said, yo, control I, right? Like control I, and then maybe we'll take it, double click into it, use blending options and take like the current layer or underlying layer, move the white over to the left to just make it a little less like crazy. But I think the noise level now feels a lot more tame than just like, it feels pretty good. What color white is this? This is pretty pure white. So I'm gonna take this and make a gradient and this gradient will keep it black, but on the right hand side, we're just gonna change this white to be a tiny bit more like an offset white, kind of like right here, which I feel like it just makes it a lot more just, you know, color, throw some color in there, you know? And then for this, okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna speed run this. I feel like a speed run. I'm gonna move this to the corner, okay? And I'm gonna just drag this down, something like that. 
Okay, move that over, move this over too. And the idea here is just to get less cluster. I think it was, it was like a big cluster going on. It felt a little bit like, I don't know, just not my favorite. I wanna see the text a little bit, right? So my, my, my immediate idea is to bring this down, maybe make him a little smaller. That way we kind of still see more of it. Now again, I can't see it, but at least now it feels like it was like an actual composition going. We got a little bit of playfulness with like uh, the photo coming into the foreground a little bit. Now, how did they make these black and white? We got hue and saturations. No. First things first, we're gonna add a like a good amount. Since we already have a clip mask, which is great, I'm gonna take a duplicate of this, make it a smart object, then put the smart object on this. That way I can go into each and every one of these and give it a camera off filter, the same exact stuff, but just make it a little bit more aggressive. Like I'm talking, you know, the usual. Okay, so this feels pretty good. I didn't put anything on him yet. I will get to that. I wanna focus on the background for a second. So I'm actually just gonna say, Let's put on a gradient map. And for this gradient map, I'm gonna choose like a pure black, but it's not gonna be like, excuse me, a non-pure black has a little bit of a blue hue to it, which I think will feel a little bit nicer. We have a mid-tone gray here. It's this color gray. And on the far right, I have a white. Now, this is not working as well as I would like. So I'm gonna move the gray tone a little bit towards the right to see if this looks a little better. Now I did add a bunch of texture and clarity and such. So it's gonna do a a big deal to this, which I might have to go back into the camera roll filter now and play with the fact that I might have to lower the whites down a tiny bit more and the shadow so it's not like incredibly aggressive. And I'll say, sure, that looks good. It would look 10 billion times better if we had a good photo. But honestly, I don't even know if this guy will have a lot of good photos. So we'll, we'll say this source is like the best here. Let's just pretend. And now I will say really quick, let me just kind of continue this vibe going on for a second and let's add in a camera filter on the actual main photo as well. You can tell the best looking photo he put in the front, right? And then, then just it, all hell broke loose after. That feels pretty good. I don't like the background being like this super noise, like the noise that's already back here and the noise in the center just feels like a little too much. And then again, whatever this background I have here, I made like pure black, like a tiny bit of blue popping out might be okay. And then this Roy Herbert, we'll just take this and make this like black like this maybe. And I feel like now we're cooking on something. So I feel like now we got a, this obvious pop of color. It's definitely him. It feels almost more like a memorial-like idea, which he is retired. I Googled it and it looks pretty good like that. Now, obviously I'm trying to think of, do I want like color on the bottom here to add more color or do I want to keep the central focus on him with that really cool like random anomaly of color on the foreground, which I think looks pretty good. I'll say yes, but I'm gonna play with the, the drop shot. I'm gonna choose to actually use white to make it feel a little more like a uh, premium or prestigious. I think black obviously feels a little bit more darker, maybe like a harder tone, but it's to, to kind of follow this line of thinness of like, what am I trying to say? You know, when you just start yapping, you just don't realize where you're going. I just like it more, okay? You got me. I don't got it. You got me. Okay, I think that looks pretty decent there. And I feel like, okay, cool. If we're gonna have this white or like a, a lower tone or a, a more vibrant color here, let's just actually really make it explore. So I'll use like a nice brush, something like so. Maybe even like take the whole bottom bit, give it a nice little hit of white like that. Let's say we did that and we're gonna add a nice little rim light. You guys know the drill. I just showed you guys how to do this if you didn't know how to do it before. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Okay, so now with the rim light itself, this background light, I want it to be a little bit less aggressive maybe. Something like this feels pretty good. So far, it feels pretty good, right? I think it feels, it needs like some kind of texture, like an NBA logo, like NBA PNG. Did you guys also know with the new update, right? You see this PNG copy image? Paste image. We finally got copy and paste in Photoshop on Windows. But I wanna try this one though. And I'll make this one maybe like black or white or like, like maybe pure black possibly. To kind of just have this sit in the corner, nice and cool, right? Just kind of like sit there as in like a nice little boom, right? It feels like a nice little texture spot. Maybe like his number. Obviously it's pretty much everywhere. I'm gonna put on the other side just for consistency sake. I have a font called Roster, by the way, that I think I would like I have a really good look for the actual numbers for like sports. I would I would love to approach this with like, like messing around with levels or curves, like taking this, bringing the levels all the way down, having it be clip mask, turn it off, and then on the shadows, take a brush, like a really nice low opacity brush, 30% and go right over everything where it's like shadows and where it should have shadows. But I do feel like with how the quality is, it might look really, really, really bad. And I do not know if I want to be an advocate of that. But like if I play with that, right, add a little bit of shadows here and there that I can go in again and maybe use like a, 
levels bring the levels up clip mask this turn it off and then turn it back on with a brush and just go over all the highlights right and maybe you guys will tell me if it makes a difference i'm just painting where it has the highlights already then kind of going over it one more time so that looks pretty good. And then I'll take this actual entire thing, control J to make a duplicate of everything, control E. So I have the duplicate of this exact thing. Take it, put it on filter, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna blur this at like 2.4 pixels, layer mask, turn it all off. And then I'll go one more time again with a little bit more opacity on this brush. And I'm gonna go over these areas one more time and really play with this. And then with all of that, did that make a difference? Oh, it kind of did. Ah, dang it. I'll do it for all of them, why not? <laughs> I'll do it okay and i feel like this looks pretty good i i feel like i didn't want to do the highlights but i'm happy i did them for sure now honestly from here i'm trying to figure out if there's anything else that i should do or to maybe add in yellow like obviously you can't really tell what his name says like behind everything but if i did go like this and if i did put like a yellow or something like that like right here, does that suffice? Does that do anything? Does it add anything? I don't feel like it adds a crazy amount or if anything at all, or if it even covers his face. So it probably just, probably not worth it. it. Like, I think the beginning concept was pretty much this. I don't want to add too much, but I will say like, I think this is the, this is it. Oh, you know what though? His original one did have some like, uh, what is it like noise? So I'm gonna actually put in, not noise, yeah, basically noise. I'm gonna put in camera raw and I'm also gonna add in some grain slash noise. So put some sharpen, maybe like crazy far ups, so it's already adding noise. Then effects, grain, and just go a little crazy with it. And now I'll take this and we'll compare it. All right, so what I hope would happen is that if you go ahead and just look at the before, I feel like the original poster had a really cool idea. I mean, I really, honestly didn't change too much i of course lowered the actual sort of like holding of the photos square to actually bring in this kind of like fun you know the top of the head clips out of the bottom of the actual like uh framing i wouldn't say my word is as visible as possible but i think i made it just a tiny bit more visible the roy hibbert like actual name from there of course shrunk him down just a tiny bit to kind of give it this sort of like like heroic almost like reminiscent and like looking back because if it's like as big as everything else it doesn't make it makes it almost feel like as if he's in the moment still taking him making him a little more smaller kind of makes him feel maybe everything feels more grand that's like my artistic way to go about it i just thought it looked better but i also if i wanted i need, I need to give it a reason that's my reason and of course eliminating that really hard contrast for like the very high contrast texture in the white very high contrast texture in the black i feel like if you eliminate one at least you're gonna get a better like balance and i feel like that's what we did we made the white a little less like contrasty and then we took away the black texture in title like in entirely and we just added just a tiny bit of noise grain and that made it feel unique and balanced and like how do you say blended enough right so with that that is the end of the video here today i honestly genuinely hope you guys enjoyed today's video i think it was pretty good like if i had to go back let me look at myself i would say we did pretty well it is you know you guys will let me know. If you guys learned something, absolute W. If you guys didn't and you guys just enjoyed, absolute W. If you guys didn't learn anything and you didn't enjoy, just leave. Don't say anything. I'd rather just, just leave. I'm kidding. But anyway, talk to you guys later. Sets HQ out. Remember to get a key smiling, stay positive, and stay a freaking predator, guys. I much love. Peace. And of course, enjoy the everything pack. If you guys picked it up, you guys have been going crazy this week. And I just want to say I love you. I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys very soon. Later.